So let's look now at inserting a parts list based on our part references and our BOM, our Bill of Materials. Now we've part referenced the bracket and the column there of the conveyor bracket assembly. So if I quickly go now to my Bill of Materials here and just specify the conveyor bracket assembly, you can see it's the default there on the command line at the bottom of the screen, so I just press Enter and there it is, there's our bracket and there's our column, steel bracket, steel column, one of each, item one, item two. So they're all there in our bill of materials. So I'll just OK that now. Now what I've done in this particular drawing is if we go to the A3 landscape tab, we have a viewport there set up of, there's our bracket and our column, so there's a top view, a side view and a front view. What I want to add now is the parts list. Now that's based on the bill of materials that you build up. So you go to your annotate tab here, you then go to the table panel here on the ribbon and go to parts list. So I click on parts list, come into the drawing area and what it's asking me on the command line there is select annotation view or create or use the main bill of materials which is our conveyor bracket assembly and the brackets there down on the command line at the bottom of the screen. So if I just press enter now what will happen is it will show me that the parts list is an ISO standard and there's my conveyor bracket assembly. Now the parts list name, obviously want to change that, that's going to become conveyor bracket assembly. Now I haven't linked any of these parts together as part of a real assembly as per AutoCAD Mechanical. What I'm doing here is just building this up. So there's the parts list name. Do we want to insert a title? Yes, we do. And the parts list style is going to be standard. So that's all fine. Insertion point, bottom right. Let's change that. I'm going to change that to, let's say, bottom left. Probably a better one. Similar to zero, zero when you insert something like a title block border. Line spacing is single. And we've only got two items there. But I am going to enable a column split where we either wrap left, number of rows, wrap right, number of sections. I'll just OK that now, and there is my parts list. Now I'll bring this into the drawing, I'm just going to drop it next to the viewport and left click, and there's my parts list there. Now what it's done, based on what those settings were, is it's allowed for 20 rows. Can you see that there? So if I change that now to say 10, like so, and I'll apply that, and I'll OK it. Can you see the size changes? So it's allowed for 10 rows in that particular parts list. So if I click there now, I can move that around by clicking on a grip. As you can see, I can move that anywhere I want, so I might position it a bit further down here towards the title block. Hit Escape to deselect. If I zoom in there though, look, I can actually look at the information and I can edit that information just by double clicking. So I double click in there, I can edit the description, the standard, the material, and so on. So I might want to change that. I can't actually add anything though to a parts list, you'll notice. What I have to do there is I'll cancel that, and I actually have to go back now to part reference. So what I would have to do is go into the model tab here, and work on my bracket and my column. So there might be some bolts, for example, that join the column to the bracket. You could add those and part reference those. They would then be added to the Bill of Materials, and then you could update your parts list using the new Bill of Material properties. So that's how you insert a parts list into your drawing. So there's my conveyor bracket assembly with my parts listed as per the drawing there.